Hello everybody, Pokey here with another episode of Steins Gate Zero. Finally, I know it's been a little while, but um, I'm ready to get on with it if you're ready to get on with it. And we just switched perspectives and we're Suzua again. Let's go. Suzua Amane was about to run out of patience. The cause was the young man in the room with her, her father. Itaru Hashida, aka Daru. His massively obese body was leaning forward over a computer monitor, and he had a dopey grin on his face. He'd finally gotten up around 11 a.m., gulped down three cups of instant ramen, and now was surfing the internet. Same. Just the silly music again. <laughs> Hmm? Oh? Oh? What? Wait, normies must die P and Parthenon are husband and wife? Nobody told me about this. And wait, his handle is normies must die, but he's a normal? He's got a wife, that's not fair. Grr, I thought he was on the side of us loners. This means war. It's trolling time. <laughs> Whoa. T-I-L that at Chan and Tweeter are already pissed off. I missed the boat. I need to go back and look at the timeline again. Dad! Yes? <laughs> That's what Suzuka called her father. It's who he was, after all. So there was nothing else to call him. Suzuka was a time traveler from the year 2036. And seven years from now, he would become her father. Stop screwing around. All you ever do is lie around and eat, or look at the internet, or play video games. I told you that nothing but instant noodles and snacks will make you sick, and that's still all you ever eat. In fact, his PC desk was covered with snacks. She cleaned it regularly, but it never seemed to make a difference. I keep telling you to exercise, but you never do. Suzuka realized she was complaining more than usual, but she had to say it anyway. At this rate, in the future... Uh, <laughs> and then she realized that Itaru wasn't even listening to her. Oh my gosh. His eyes were fixed on the computer, computer monitor. He'd moved his mouse out of sight, but she could still hear him clicking it. What the? <laughs> Listen to me. Suzu approached her father from behind and put the hairspray can she'd been hiding up to his neck. Ah! <laughs> you think it's a gun? Itaru seemed to think it was a gun. He stuck his hands up. Threats like this worked. They worked because she told him that she'd survived the Third World War and the war is in chaos of 2036, and that she was ready to draw a gun and pull the trigger whenever she needed to. Suzua, if you don't stop, daddy's gonna get mad! That, that kind of threat won't work on Suzua. <laughs> I'm getting mad at you right now. Alright, sorry. But, but you know about my secret job, right? I'm pretty busy with that. When you're as good a hacker as I am, there are always a ton of offers. I don't have time to eat real food, right? And there's the time difference with overseas clients, so sometimes I'm like up all night. In the future, you used to say that all the time, and then mom would always get mad at you. Even if, for the sake of the argument, we can't do anything about your sleep schedule, I can't let you keep eating all this unhealthy food. You'll stop immediately, got it? You will stop immediately. But work's hard, and so is the time machine research. I need to relax. You just use that as an excuse to slack off. You're being a spoiled brat, Dad. Suzuka was always amazed that her dad managed to survive the future's wars. But since the time machine research would affect the future and eventually Suzuka's very presence here, she couldn't tell him to stop. 
Even after Itaro Okabe stopped coming to the Future Gadget Lab, Itaro had kept working on the time machine all by himself. Suzuha never said a word about it. If she did, it might create a time paradox. Just remember, you can't examine the time machine that came from the future to build your own. She decided to warn him again. I know that. Sometimes I lose confidence. Can I really make a time machine? Of course you can. Hang in there. It's been from threatening to supportive. Really quick. Okay. Suzuha took the hairspray can off of his neck. Whoa. Hey, I was sure that was a gun and it wasn't. How can you trick your own dad? I'll use a real one next time, okay? Please don't. Suzuha put the can of hairspray back onto, on the shelf. It was something Rintaro Okabe had left there, left here when he'd lived in the lab. It was still here since its owner never came back for it. You know, in manga and video games, it's always really cute when a girl scolds her dad. Uh, this game better not start getting creepy on me. Suzua, Suzua, can you try to say, Aw, oh, jeez, don't do that, Papa, in a really sweet voice if you can. Uh, no. Never mind. Dad shrank from Suzua's glare. Ha! Alright. What? Suzua sat up. Ha! Suzua sighed loudly and dropped herself on the, s on the sofa. She leaned back against the hard head, head the, 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 against the headrest and stared at the ceiling, then closed her eyes. What's wrong? It's nothing. You can't hide it from me. When you say it's nothing, that means I want you to listen to me, right? Huh? Come on, tell me. Daru sounded very serious. Suzu's eyes went wide for a moment, but then she realized. Boom, 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 boom. That line was that was in the girl game you were playing earlier, wasn't it? Ugh. <laughs> That's a phrase that triggers the flag, right? She'd been living here for the for three months. She was starting to learn a little about Akihabara's culture, circa 2010. Dad, you'd better not be thinking about trying to take my root, oh, my root, okay? What's up with that apostrophe? My root. The apostrophe on of the front of root starts at the end of that. Okay, never mind. <sighs> yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't do that to my own daughter. Really, I always wondered about you in the future. Oh no. Huh? Even after I hit puberty, you always kept asking me to take baths- Oh, baths with you. That's kind of disturbing. What? That's scary. Yeah, that too. I was in the military and you were always working on the time machine, so we couldn't always be together. But you always got huggy around me. It was honestly kind of obnoxious. This is getting- Really, this the silly music is getting really unfitting really fast. Dad looked honestly depressed, and she realized that she'd gone too far. What was she just like messing around with him? Oh, music change, <laughs> just like that. He always said to me, you know, this is the worst world line possible, but your birth was the best thing that could have happened. I don't want to dis disappoint the future you, Dad, so I need to convince Uncle Okarin no matter what. It's okay. I'll never be disappointed. Really? Yeah. But Uncle, he just won't listen to me. He's not going back to the past like this. He won't rescue Karisu Makise, and he won't reach Steins Gate. Steins Gate. That was the name of the mysterious world line her dad had told her about in 2036, where World War III might not occur. Might? 
Oh boy. Leading Rintaro Okabe to that world line was her mission. But right now, it wasn't going well. Suzuha had come to 2010, and just like the mission had called for, she'd succeeded in sending Rintaro Okabe to July 28th. But then, he'd failed. And he wasn't going to try again. Every time they met, she tried to convince him, but who knew if her words were having any effect? In the end, this world line will converge into the Third World War, and many people will be killed. I came here to change that, but maybe fate says that I can't. Suzua had something else she had to do here in Akihabara in December 2010, besides convincing Rintaro Okabe, and it meant she was running around every day. The exhaustion was starting to take its toll on her. During the war, she'd been able to keep herself sharp at all times, and this level of exhaustion wouldn't have meant anything. Wait, but, but what's... But, What's her other goal? The relaxed atmosphere of 2010 was actually making her realize how tired she was. She was feeling very sleepy right now, actually. She was, the, the, she was surprised at how willing she was to fall asleep in such an undefended position, but she didn't think she could beat the temptation. And then suddenly she felt something extremely cold on the back of her neck. What did the like put ice down her neck or something? She snapped awake in an instant. Her movements after that were lightning quick. She jumped up and slid behind the massive body in front of her, which obviously belonged to Ichiru, then grabbed his arm and twisted it as she dropped him to the floor. She went to draw the gun at her hip and her hand swiped through empty air. And then she came back to reality. Her gun was hidden. She wasn't carrying it. This wasn't 2036. Ow, ow, ouchies! Two cans of Dr. P clattered to the floor. Good old Dr. P. That must have been what he put on her neck. I weird. I said that kind of weird. That must have been what he put on her neck. What are you doing, Dad? G getting you back. I was half asleep, so I almost killed you. Wah! I've told you that's how I've been trained. That could have turned out really badly for you. Fine, just let me go. This really hurts. Oh, sheesh. Suzuka let her father go. Ow. Taru rubbed his arm and stood up then grabbed the cans of Dr. P off the floor. He offered one to Suzua. Anyway, you're giving up too soon. Keep at it a little longer. I think Ogreen's just tired and sleeping. Put some cold Dr. P up to his neck, like I just did, and he'll wake up. I have a, I have a feeling that things won't turn out, so... I mean, it's Ogreen we're talking about. I mean... I mean, things won't turn out eat good that easily. Yeah, woo. She realized her dad was trying to cheer her up and nodded. Was that him? Oh. Then she heard footsteps coming up the stairs and some slightly off-key humming. Ah, ah! Their eyes met. Which of those two Oz belonged to Utaru and which one belonged to Zuzua? You be the judge. <laughs> Their eyes met. Just the sound was enough to tell them who it was. Hi, Suzua. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Who is it? Suzua moved fast. Maybe even faster than when she knocked her father to the ground. She quickly and silently jumped behind the curtain that separated the lab's de de development room from the rest of it. Just as she hid beneath the desk, there was a knock at the door. Is this, um, Yuki? That was her name, right? Hello? Suzu knew that voice, of course. It was her mom! Yay! 
She could tell from the noises he was making that her dad was panicking. There was another knock. Uh, Mayuri? Right, right, I'm, I'm coming. Itaru went to open the door. Suzua took a deep breath and concentrated her mind. She remembered the time she spent three days and three nights on a battlefield with no food and nothing to drink, constantly aiming her rifle at the target. She erased any trace of her presence that could give her away. Her breathing started to become shallow. Dad, don't screw this up, okay? Oh, yeet. Yeah. Amane, she, you're meeting Mayushi today? Itaru came back into the room with the girl. Yes, we were supposed to practice cooking together. She could hear plastic bags rustling. She must have brought the ingredients. Mayushi's not here yet. I see. Maybe I'm a little too early. Ah, uh, you just you just showed up early so so you could see Daru. I'm on to you, Yuki. I'm so on to you. Yuki Amane. Just as the name Amane suggested, she was Suzua's mother in the. Wait. They told us Yuki. His name was Yuki Amane before. Did I honestly forget that Suzu? I feel so dumb. I bet like. Everyone else, like, instantly knew... Oh my... Suzu's last name is Amane. I mean, unless I'm, like, stupid for thinking I'm stupid, but I'm pretty sure I just, like, totally missed that. It went right over my head. Oh, well. <laughs> she was Suzu's mother in the future. In other words, the two of them in the other room were supposed to get married. Well, if you two were supposed to meet, I'm sure she'll get here eventually, right? Can I wait here? Of course! You're going to be cooking here, right? Yes, I hope you'll do some taste testing for us, Hashida. I don't know if I want to eat Mayushi's cooking. Don't worry, Mayushi's gotten a lot better lately. Huh. Itaru was clearly nervous. As far as Suzua knew, the only girl he acted that way around was Yuki Amane. Suzua and Mayuri were practically family, and he got along with fine with big sis Rumi, Ferris Nyan Nyan, who worked at the maid cafe next door. So it wasn't that he didn't know how to act around girls, but for some reason he always acted differently when she was around. She told him that Yuki would be his wife some- What? Suzua, why would you tell him that? Like, what possible motivation could you have for telling him that, like, this girl is gonna be his wife when, like, you were refusing to, like, let him see the old time machine, built the new time machine, built that, or the other way around, whatever. And so, that's like, why would Suzu say that? <laughs> that's so dumb! That's obviously the reason he acts differently when, when she's around. Jeez, it's too late to do anything about it now, but maybe that was a mistake, she thought. Wow, I wonder. Um, is your sister not here today? Wait, what? Huh? Uh, yeah. Wait. What? Wait, didn't... Okay, earlier, Yuki made reference to Zua saying that Daru liked Suzua because she was like a sister but and I complained that Mayuri should have made up like a cover story for them but they already had a cover story and that was that they were siblings but Yuki still thinks that they're t that <laughs> this is kind of b mind boggling I'm sorry <laughs> so I don't know, maybe there's some, like, darker side to Yuki that I don't understand. Maybe she's, like, secretly really into, into incest. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> that is so weird. I see. Itaru Hoshida's sister was none other than Suzua herself. 
Around the same time Suzuka had started spending all her time in the lab, Yuki had become friends with Mayuri and Itaru, and began visiting more frequently, which meant that avoiding her was almost impossible. And so she was forced to tell Yuki that she was Itaru's little sister. But still, she wanted to keep contact to a minimum in order to keep Yuki from finding out somehow. That was why she was hiding. Yeah. So this really is kinda puzzling. So Yuki's into Daru, Daru's into Yuki, but Yuki thinks that Daru is into Suzua, but Yuki also thinks that Daru and Suzua are siblings, unless Yuki's onto Zua's cover story and suspects that they're not actually siblings. Maybe that would make more sense than her thinking that they're actually siblings and <laughs> okay, I really hope the story like helps helps my mind because I'm really confused. <laughs> oh right, what do you think of this outfit? I just bought it. Whoa, 2D, 3D of of the future, <laughs> twirling. That was amazing. Yuki showed no signs of noticing Suzua. She was twirling around in the center of the room as if she was at a fashion show. Yuki was a cosplayer and wanted as many people as possible to see her dressed up. Mayuri had told Suzua that once, that once before. In fact, Yuki and Mayuri spent a lot of time complimenting each other's outfits. Yup, it's great! Really great! Really? It's like, whoa, an angel for the win! Thank you! An angel for the win? You should dress up too, Ishida. Just lose a tiny bit of weight, and I think you'd look wonderful. <laughs> I'm serious, you know? Uh oh. Itaru Ishida and Yuki Amane. As she listened to their awkward conversation, Suzua remembered the last time she'd said goodbye to her dad. What are we getting at? Uh, 2036, uh, August 13th. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. I kind of... I mean, this is all interesting and all, but I kind of miss Miss Okarin. Dad, the peacekeeping squads have reached Monse, Mount Sebashi. Which means it's only a matter of time until they find this place. I guess the false information I leaked didn't do us any good. Let's hurry. Yeah, I'm opening it up. Oh, my Yuri's here too. Wow, I had no idea there was a door here. Nobody will ever find this, huh? Come on inside. What is this place? Oh! Wait. Who? What? Who? Is that? That looks like curry soup. What? What the heck? What? Who is that little child Mayuri is carrying? Do I know her? That is... Okay, I'm just gonna ignore it for now. That is so weird. The room was almost totally empty and covered from top to bottom in soundproofing materials. Uh, also, Mayuri is wearing the same outfit as she is uh, in present day. Uh, not only were there no windows, there wasn't even a door in the, to the hallway. The building they were in was once a symbol of old Akihabara before it was almost entirely destroyed by an air raid during the last days of the Third World War. Only a few people knew about the secret room inside it. The biggest reason was its secret, the silhouette of what looked like a satellite sitting in the corner. Ooh. This music is pretty epic. <laughs> oh, this is the time machine, isn't it? Girl, this is the time machine? K Kigari? K 
Sorry, it's dangerous, so don't get too close. Suzu spoke to the little girl clutching Mayuri's hand. Most of the children in this era had skin inflammations somewhere on their body from all the radioactive grain, but she didn't. Her name was Kagari Shina. Oh shoot, that's that's another character's name, isn't it? Sheena. Okay, I'm gonna go with it. Her registration form said she was 10 years old, but no one knew if that was true. She was an orphan who'd lost her parents in the Tokyo Air Raids when she was a baby, and nobody even knew her birthday. The name Kagari had been given to her by Mayuri, who was working at the Child Welfare Center that had taken her in. She took it from the word Kag Kagaribi, meaning bonfire, in hope that she could be a light even in these dark days. It had been four years since Mayuri had adopted her, and her name, oh, it's Mayuri's name, and her name on the registration form had become Kagari Shina. Yep, it's Mayuri. Great, I have to turn off that voice too, I'll be right back. And I, okay, I, I did that, and I just decided while, while I'm here, I should uh, check out this tip. Um, Mansebashi. Uh, one of the bridges on the south side of Akihabara that crosses over the Kanda River. Kanda River or something. The, orig the original Mansebashi was built in a different spot. When new Mansebashi Bridge was built in its current location, the old bridge became known as Old Mansebashi until it was taken down altogether in 1906. The bridge only came into its current arc shape after several re rebuildings, including one after the Great Kanto Earthquake. Huh. Uh, it's pretty, Mommy. Yeah, it is. Zua motioned for the Sheenas to step back and put her right hand and right eye up to the time machine sensor. The biometrics check cleared and the hatch slid open. She went inside and fastened herself into the seat. We, we've never done a man jump of this length before, but the technology is just fine. Just do it like the test jumps. Okie dokie. <laughs> she says okie dokie here too. Is that a thing in, in Stein's Gate? I can't remember. Suzua began to flip switches, working her way through the startup procedure. She practiced it hundreds of times in preparation for this day. The faint rumble from the machine began to get louder. According to the data, the spot we're in now was the roof of the old radio building. There's a gap of, of about a meter, so when you land there's going to be an impact. Roger. The time machine could move through time, but not space. To arrive at the radio building more than 60 years in the past, she needed to launch from right here. Even if something happens, stay calm. Remember your training. I'll be fine. I believe in your machine, Dad. Her words must have meant a lot meant a lot to him, because he stuck out his lips towards her. She squished them back with her hand. That's creepy. <laughs> that makes me sad. Do you not like your daddy, Suzua? When you do it, it seems like you mean something else. Ugh. Come on, I wouldn't think of my own daughter that way. So who was it who was saying, you're starting to remind me of your mother, Pant... Pant... What? Pant... Pant? Her mother wasn't here. She'd become a victim of the war, brutally killed by the peacekeeping squads. Yeesh. Don't take my joke seriously, please. What? It was a joke? Zizu's voice sounded kind of disappointed. She set the destination for August 13th, 1975. Her first mission was there. That does it. Okay, Dad. My... She was about to say her goodbyes. But then... Kia! Yeah! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That was from the roof! They're coming in! Damn it, they're faster than I thought. 
Suzuka drew her gun from her holster. She was about to get out of the time machine, but her dad stopped her. No, just go. But, y'all, we'll be fine. Just go, Suzuka. No, I can't. Mayushi, get Kagari in there. Huh? There's a room for another person in here. What? What? Mayuri and Suzuka's father... Wait... August 13th night? Please don't tell me that's like Kagurisu or something. Is that actually it? I don't... Oh my gosh. I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. Mayuri and Suzuka's father picked up the stunned Kagari and stuffed her into the time machine. Suzu, take care of K Kagari. Okay. If Suzu's mission succeeded, the world line would be rebuilt, and it was likely that the present Kagari would cease to exist. It might have been pointless to send her. But even so, a mother wants her child to live. That's how Suzu's mom was, too. M Mommy? Kagari finally seemed to understand what was going on. She called out to her mom. No! I don't wanna! I don't wanna go! It's okay, Kagari. Suzu's with you, okay? No! I wanna go with you! If you go to the past, you'll see the old me. I'll be a lot younger than I am now. I bet you'll be surprised. Mayuri handed Kagari a tiny keychain. It looked old. It may have been a brightly colored green once, but now it was completely faded. What? What? This is... <laughs> this is Mommy's oop oop keychain. I'm giving it to you. Take good care of it, okay? It looks a lot like Kurisu. I'm just saying. Once it was pressed firmly into Kagari's hand, she stepped back. Mayuri was smiling, but weeping at the same time. No! I don't want to go! I want to stay with you, Mommy! 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 No! Kagari, be quiet! Kagari felt silent immediately. Even Suzuka had never heard Mayuri use that tone of voice. That's how harshly she scolded her daughter. Wah. Mommy. Wah. It's a pretty lame child boy voice, but whatever. <laughs> Sue me. Kagari was quietly weeping, unmoving. I'm closing the hatch. This time, the hatch really did begin to close. The inside of the machine and the outside of it. Oh, um. Wait, no, I forgot what date. What date they were going to? Okay, never mind. I was gonna say that can't be Kurisu because the the date they're going to wouldn't line up with Kurisu's age. But like, they're gonna go to multiple stops, and I don't really remember. It just fell out of my head where they where exa when exactly they were going. The two worlds were about to be completely cut off from one another. Whether Suzuka's mission was successful or not, she would probably never see any of them again. Suzu, make sure you take care of Kagari. And tell Okarin that Steinsgate really exists. Tell him, don't give up no matter what, you moron. Okie dokie. <laughs> I guess that's a thing she says. <laughs> Even when when times are serious, she just says okie dokie. Uh, Alright. I guess that's just a quirk of hers. And then the door was sealed shut, and Mayuri and Itaru's voices disappeared along with the chaos outside. Dad, I love you. She whispered towards the door, now sealed shut. Let's go, Karari, to the past. She booted up the time machine. Uh, Ashina, where's the vacuum? 
to do a snap back to reality. Whoa, <laughs> that was kind of intense. Um, oh, wrong button. Uh, let's check out that other hint we got. Uh, tips, I mean. Uh, here's, uh, biometrics. Uh, the use of fingerprints, voice recognition, vein, iris scanning, etc. instead of a password. Upa, fictional, the mascot character of the Rynet Kakero anime. A dog-like virtual pet with an egg-shaped cylindrical body and short, stubby arms and legs. Comes in many different colors. It can't talk, but it can communicate by crying Upa or Upa. Alright guys, I think it's about time that we end this episode off here. Um, I'm really glad that we're getting pretty far in the story. It feels like it's been ages since I've actually done something in this game. Um, I'm excited to get back to Ocarine though. I'm starting to miss him, even though all this stuff is definitely pretty interesting. But um, maybe that'll be a thing that happens in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I've been Pokey, this has been Steins Gate Zero, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.